Hello, welcome to the final cut. Mark the Movie Man here. Let's dive right into today's movie, which is Camel Spiders. Yes, Camel Spiders. No, I'm not talking about spiders that have two big humps on them and resemble camels. No, these are actual spiders. They go by various names in the Middle East, and supposedly, according to the summary, they're tormenting our current, currently our U.S. soldiers. Uh, well, anyway, in this story, we have Camel Spiders being ferocious, vicious, huge, of various, well, various type sizes of spiders that are deadly to man, okay? We open with army soldiers fighting uh, terrorists, we think, or insurgents. Bad guys, okay? They're fighting the bad guys. Suddenly the bad guys all get wiped out by this uh, pack of spiders. Well, then the U.S. soldiers fight off the spiders. They think they got them fought off, but they don't notice a couple, a few of the spiders that decide to take residence inside a U.S. soldier's corpse, and that corpse is transported back to the U.S. Well, while traveling across the Arizona desert, the court, there's an accident, and the spiders escape the corpse, and they go and fruit be fruitful and multiply faster than rabbits on Viagra. And we see the uh, battle ensue between the soldiers who were transporting the U.S. soldiers' corpse, who band with the local townsfolk, who try to take out the ever-growing population of camel spiders. Folks, Jim Wynorski, who has been just known for his exploitation films over the past couple of decades, brings us this wild tale of spiders. Now, I wish it would have been more entertaining, in all honesty, okay? There are some great bits in it. Like, I love the town cafe, which basically had just about every cliche small town storyline you've seen uh, for characters in a small town horror film. You got that here. You got the uh, dysfunctional family with the separated wife and husband with the daughter caught in between who just wants mom and dad to get back together. You got the peaceful guy who doesn't want to work with the soldiers anymore, okay? You got the evil corporate guy who wants to buy the cafe from the cafe owner who refuses to sell. You got all these little storylines packed in this cafe. So I did love that bit on it, okay? And, you know, the gore, gore is CGI, though. Come on, let's go more practical. There are some practical gore effects, which were pretty cool, but too much CGI gore in here. I know they were working on a low budget, but still, you can spring for some practical effects. They look a lot better. All right, their performances, yeah, they're okay. You got Brian Krause like I said, he plays Captain Sturgis, kind of the leader of the band of people against the spiders. Okay, you got C. Thomas Howell in here as well, who we did see in the uh, mutant, was it, mutant vampire zombies from the hood. I reviewed that earlier. He was in that. He's also in this. So it's refreshing to see him on the screen again. Uh, you've got uh, she the person playing Shelley Underwood, Melissa. She was in Cheerleader Massacre. And then you've got uh, uh, Diana Terranova. I love that name. And she was in Piranaconda, which I still have to see. And she's in this as well. Everybody does well with the script they have. Unfortunately, the script they have just isn't that good, okay? It's just wife off thin. It's about, it's, you know, it makes, it makes Paris Hilton look like Mama Cass, all right? That's how thin the script is. And the people in it, you know, you've got the horror cliche of some of the characters doing stupid things in horror films. Well, imagine every stupid thing every character's done in a horror film. It's put in this film, okay? The, I'll go look by myself in the dark area where the spiders probably won't be, but they, you know, they are, okay? So there's a lot of non-intelligent people roaming around in this film that, uh, you know, Darwin takes control and the spiders take care of. I did enjoy the design of the spiders. You know, there's also a subplot in there of a group of college kids who are also being chased by the spiders, but they have the dumbest professor in the world who sees one of the big spiders on the beach, and he goes up, oh, look! I haven't seen one of these in many ages. They're like, you know, he, you imagine what happens. But still, there's stuff like that that just kind of, you go, oh, really? Come on, you know? But there are some entertaining bits, but not enough to make this such a bad movie. It's good. It just makes it a bad movie that is okay, all right? So if you are looking for something different, you are a fan of Jim Wynorski's films, you may enjoy this movie, though there is a lot less uh, gratuitous nudity than we are used to in many of his films, so you may be disappointed there. But otherwise, I'd say for your average horror viewing fan, you can probably skip Camel Spiders unless you really want to watch some cheesy cinema and have about 88 minutes of your life you never want to get back. And that about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep the tickets up.